Hi, I'm Mark Luthold, and I'm going to show you how to set up this kiln sitter on the kiln named Laureen. Um, this is the kiln sitter right here. Okay, uh, it says model LT3. It's a, a Dawson kiln sitter, and the kiln sitter has two parts to it. It has the part that, that's on the outside of the kiln, and it also has the part that's on the inside of the kiln right here. So it's very important that you uh, handle both of these. Now there are a couple of kilns in the studio that have kiln sitters, but this one I could create this video that shows you both sides without moving the camera. Um, okay, so the kiln sitter is in the off deactivated position and uh, you can tell because this is the kiln weight and it's it's down and it needs to be up for the for the kiln sitter to work but on the inside you have to put a pyrometric cone in between these three pieces of metal and look right here this is called the claw of the kiln sitter and it's when you flick it up and down, it makes this third piece of metal go up and down. Um, it's very simple to use. Now, um, we're going to put a cone in the, um, in the kiln sitter, and this is a backup safety mechanism. It's not really going to do much for the firing, but if, in case the controller didn't work, which never happens, um, you would um, have the kiln, the kiln sitter. So this is a very good cone to put in it. It's cone 03 because we're going to be firing to cone 04 at the hottest. Our glaze firings likely will be cone 04 and our uh, bisque firings will be 08. So this would be good for either. And you can find these in the cabinet in the back corner of the room. And inside the box you find a lot of these little pyrometric bar cones. And if you look very carefully, it's almost impossible to see, but there is a little O3 mark and it isn't a bad idea to look at that to make sure you're using the right one. Well, we want this, this claw holding this weight up and it can't do it unless there's a cone on the inside of the kiln so we're gonna go to the inside and we'll put the cone in between these three pieces of metal like this but we forgot something actually I forgot it on purpose we forgot to put the weight up and we can't do it now with the cone in place so I'm gonna take the cone back out and I'm going to put the weight in and push this claw this is called the claw again I'm gonna push that claw down which is gonna leave the little third bar up and I can just slide that cone in like so and now the kiln sitter, the cone is in place in the kiln sitter, but there's still more that has to be done. In order to activate the kiln sitter, we have to press this little white plastic button right here in the center. Don't press this so much, just right in here. My fingers are fat, so I have to use this white, I have to use my pinky to press that white button in. And um, just FYI, here's the timer. You also have to cock the timer. The timer has a 20 hour limit and if it times out the white button shuts off and the kiln shuts off so during your fire you've got to make sure that that timer is cocked sufficiently. I think usually once in the middle of the firing is a good idea to, to have a look and recock the timer. Now if I try to press this white button in it won't stick because of the timer's at zero, it's timed out. So I've got to put the timer at, I'm gonna put it at 
19 and a half. I don't like to put it at the maximum. And now I can press the white button in. And now we're all set. Our, our kiln sitter is, is good. Here the weight's up, the timer's cocked. And on the inside, we have the cone in place. We're good to go. Um, happy firing.